JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for March the 8th. I am Haralamos Pissoros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar kept drifting uh, north uh, against uh, the other major currencies on Monday and during the Asian session on Tuesday. It gained the most versus AUD and NZD while it lost the least ground against uh, the Euro. Now, although the Euro fought back against its US counterpart, this was after it tumbled uh, more on, uh, on Friday, which suggests uh, that yesterday's stabilization may have been just a short covering effect. Now, with the crisis in Ukraine showing no signs of easing, investors continue to, to trade in a risk of manner, and this is evident not only by the USD strength, but also by the fact that major European and US indices continued to, to tumble with uh, the negative appetite rolling into the Asian session today as well. Oil prices opened the week uh, with a strong positive gap, and although they corrected lower, they re the retreat was uh, short-lived and another rebound followed. This was due to headlines and reports that the US and its Western allies weigh, on, uh, weigh a ban on importing uh, Russian oil. This raises more fears over uh, further acceleration in inflation around the globe, but with the conflict uh, more likely to affect global economies as well, especially in Europe, uh, how central banks may respond remains a uh, riddle. This is what we call stagflation. Now, with uh, the Europe expected to be affected the most, we don't believe that the falls in the euro and the pound uh, are over. We see decent chances for those currencies to continue drifting south. At the same time, the US dollar and other safe havens like the yen may stay supported. As uh, for equities, with uh, some indices officially into correction territory and Nasdaq confirming a bear market, we still believe uh, that the path of least, of least resistance is, uh, is to the downside. But what about the risk-linked uh, Aussie, Kiwi and Looney? As commodity-linked currencies, they've been receiving support from rising energy and commodity prices despite the broader risk aversion. However, usually fears of slowing growth around the globe weigh on those currencies and this is what may have uh, happened uh, yesterday. Having said all that, the technical charts still point to uptrends and thus for now we would consider yesterday's setback in these currencies as a corrective wave within uh, the broader upside path. Now, as for today's events, and during the European session, uh, Germany releases its industrial production data for January, while from the Eurozone as a whole, we get the final estimate of quarter four GDP, as well as the employment change uh, for that same quarter. Germany's industrial production is expected to have rebounded 0.5% month over month after sliding 0.3% in December, while Eurozone's GDP is expected to confirm its second estimate of 0.3% quarter over quarter. No forecast is currently available for uh, the employment change. Now, later in the day, we get trade data for January from um, both the US and Canada. The US trade deficit is expected to have widened to 87.10 billion US dollars from 80.70 billion, while Canada's uh, 0 0.14 billion uh, deficit is anticipated to have turned into a 2 billion uh, surplus. Now, as for tomorrow, Asian time, Japan's final GDP for the fourth quarter, as well as China's CPI and PPI rates for February, are coming out. Japan's quarter-over-quarter -quarter growth rate is expected to be revised up to 1.4% from 1.3%, while both the Chinese rates are expected to have slid somewhat. 
Specifically, the CPI is anticipated to have ticked down to 0 0.8 uh, from 0.9% year over year, where the PPI is forecast to have slid to 8.7% from 9.1%. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the many events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock AM, AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again uh, tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.